Hello everyone, this is Prem Kumar. In this video, we are going to understand how to design the data model. Designing data model is key for building any Pega application. You need to identify the right data objects, right data model, then you know how to create properties, everything. At the end, with the right data model, you can also rightly export some data into different data warehouse systems. When you want to design the data model for any Pega application, I recommend you to follow the six steps. Now I'm going to shortly walk you through the six steps. The first one is identify the data objects. For any Pega application, you can easily pick what can be the data objects. For the client's records, I can easily say customer can be a data object, policy can be a data object, approver also can be a data object. By this way, you have to rightly pick the right data objects. This your business analyst can also help you with identifying the right data objects for your application. The next is once you identify the data objects, then you can define the attributes for your data object. For example, for the customer details, I can have customer ID, customer type and all other details that are related to the customer. With this, you can identify attributes under each of the data objects. Similarly, for policy you can do, for approver you can do, and for all other data objects, you can define the attributes. The third step is identify the out-of-the-box data layers. As we all know, we built our Pega application over the Pega platform, and in some cases, you also may be using the framework layers. And Pega by out-of-the-box, they ship lot of data layers. For example, for address, you may have some data layer. So you need to identify the out of the box data layer so that you can reuse it as such. So you don't want to build another data layer over. Instead, you try to reuse the existing out of the box data layers. And as a fourth step, you can relate the data objects. Relating data object, what I meant here is, let's take two data objects, the customer data object and address also can be a data object because under address, you can have the street number, house number and all of the details that are part of the address. Now customer is one data object, address is one data object and definitely this customer he is going to have some address right. So definitely there is going to be a link between this customer and the address. So under customer data object I can have address as a page property that can map to the data object of address so that it can use all the attributes of address data object. By this way definitely when you define data model for your application there will be some link or relation between different data objects so you have to identify the relation. The fifth point is on situation layering. You need to identify under which layer you are going to place your data objects. It can be on the organization layer, division layer, unit layer or it can be also on the application specific layer. So you have to identify that so that you can create the data objects on the right layer. It means your class will have the right inheritance. And finally, as a sixth point, this is the main point, you have to decide on the system of record or the persistence. It means who is going to be the source of the data. Customer details, policy details, it can be sourced from a different system. And for other data objects, maybe Pega application is the system of record. This helps to decide what type of class we can create either for abstract and concrete. And we know concrete classes can have only instances, whereas abstract classes, they cannot have instances. So all these six steps, when you tick it, you are right to go for data model design. In this video, I'm going to use all these six steps and define a nice data model for the client's application. Let's get started. I have divided this task into six steps. Let's go each of the step in detail. Identify the data objects. Here we can identify the data objects that are part of the client's application. I have defined the five major data objects for this tutorial. It starts with customer details, policy details, approvers, address and fraud watch list. Customer details is going to hold all the customer related details and policy details similarly is going to hold all the policy related details. Approvers is going to hold the list of operators who can approve the client's request case. Although we can also use the work party to do the approval process. I am going to use it as a separate data object here. Address will correspond for each customer to hold their address details. Fraud watch list. I haven't talked about this data type in the previous lectures. I am introducing this here and also in the coming lectures we will use this data object that is going to hold the customers as well as the policy details which are related to some fraudulent activities. So with this watch list we can also treat the climbs process in a more efficient way. Now the next step 
identify the data attributes. Each data object can hold list of data attributes. Customer details and policy details are again bit familiar. Customer details can hold the full name, the date of birth, all some personal details like phone number, email address and customer type. And address can hold all the address related objects. Policy details can hold the policy number, issue date, payment mode and the policy type. Approvers, as I told before, is going to represent the operator IDs who can approve or reject the request. So definitely user ID or operator ID position so can be a manager or a director, full name, phone number and email address for sending out notifications. Address corresponds to each individual customer and the basic address model we all know is going to hold street, house, number, zip code, state, etc. Fraud watch list. It's going to hold the customer details and the policy numbers that are related to some fraudulent activities or fraud types. The basic attributes of this data type is customer ID, customer name, policy number and the fraud type. Fraud type can be like incorrect document or fake profile. There are some different fraud types which we will see in the next lecture. Okay, now the next step. Identify OOTB data layers that can be reused. For these five data objects, I have already identified few OOTB data layers that can be reused. For address, we can see Pega already ships data address postal as a data type or you can call it as a data class. And I'm going to use that data layer as a base layer and going to construct address over that layer. If I use such way, I don't want to create properties like street name, house name, zip code, etc. Mostly that will be shipped within the Pega product. So you can just reuse all the attributes that are already shipped. You don't want to declare or create any properties. Similarly for approvers, as I told before, it's going to hold the operator ID instances. So you don't want to create anything. All you have to do, just reference this class and all the attributes you can use under approvers of one, approvers of two, etc. If you are really using the Pegas insurance framework, then you may get customer data, policy details, maybe fraud watch list, I'm not sure. But mostly you will get those customer and policy for sure and you can use the Pegas framework customer data and policy data as a base layer and build another class layer over it so that you can have your own attributes on the top layer. For now let's use just only two out of the box class layer. Now the next step. Relate the data objects. You can also have some relation or embedded objects into each other. Like for example, address as I said is going to correspond to the customer object. Each customer is going to hold an address object. So these are related. So technically you can build an address of page and then those can hold the objects of the class address. Next, you can define the situation layer for your data object. As you know, during the app creation lecture, we already saw we have created our app directly on the org layer. We don't have any division or unit layer. So our main choice is only true. You can have your data layer on the org or you can have it on the application layer. If you look at the data objects, customer details, policy details, definitely it can be reused across the organization, the A-Life Insurance organization. So I'm going to define those as a organization data layer. So it means like, a life data customer maybe a life data policy similarly for address it can be reused across the organization but if you look at the approvers it's going to be more related to the claims approvers right so i don't want to define it in org layer no one is going to reuse this approvers in the organization layer as it is more related to the application layer so i'll define the approvers in the app layer and my class will be a life hyphen claims of hyphen data hyphen maybe approvers similarly for fraud watch list this is also more specific to the claims application which can hold the claims fraudulent activities i'm going to define it as an application data layer and the final step decide on the system of record or persistence of your data object so our claims application is just going to service the claims request we are not going to store any customer details. We are not going to store any policy details in our system. All we will be doing is we will make some external calls, some integration calls to get the customer details and policy details. And we will just map it into some data layer. 
those are all external data that get referenced by our application so ideally they don't want to get persisted into our database it can be just part of the case whereas fraud watch list this data object will be created and maintained by our system or our application will source the data and also can update the data if different application wants this data then we can provide the data from our database so i have defined the persistence only for the fraud watch list data object and for all other data objects there's not going to be a persistent so technically i will be creating abstract classes for all these four data layers and only concrete classes for this fraud watch list data layer i hope the six steps which i mentioned will help you to define the right data model see you in the next video